welcome to my channel. My name is Bailey Ruskis, also known as Chef Bay, and I'm a professional plant-based chef and a best-selling cookbook author of the cookbook, Cook, Heal, Go Vegan. I am so excited that you're here and you landed on this video. Be sure to like, comment, and subscribe. And if you want more tips and tricks in the kitchen, keep watching. This is also the place for exclusive videos to my podcast, The Plant Remedy. If you're interested in diving deeper in plant-based cooking or just want to incorporate a little bit of fun into your cooking routine, join our membership called Cook by Heal that you can cook with me live weekly and it's so much fun. So I hope you enjoyed this video and I'll see you soon. All right, you guys, I'm here with the amazing Dr. Michael Greger. Thank you so much for coming on the show. How's it going? Happy to be here. Honored to be here. How exciting. Yeah, this is so exciting. I just want to take note to our listeners um, that he's on a treadmill right now. So he's really stepping up. <laughs> walk the walk, baby. <laughs> yeah, you're really like setting the bar really high here. I love that. So um, I have to ask as everyone this, what's your favorite plant-based meal right now? As a chef, I got to know. Ooh, oh my God, all sorts of wonderful stuff. Um, I can tell you what I'm having for supper. Yes, let's do that. I'm having hummus mac, Ooh, which okay. is basically just like pasta, vegetables, and hummus. Pasta, vegetables, <laughs> and hummus. So, uh, yeah, so we got some arugula, some uh, um, red kale, and some broccoli, uh, and uh, red bell pepper going with some uh, rotini. Okay. And a nice uh, cilantro jalapeno hummus. Oh, cilantro jalapeno. Honestly, that sounds like my husband's most favorite meal. He literally eats like a tub's worth size of hummus every single day. So there you go. Smart man. Oh yeah. He loves it. He's six foot four. So he's got to get those calories in, you know, Yeah. all the beans, man. Okay. So I'd beans. love, yes, all the beans. So, um, I'd love to know kind of like backtracking to the beginning. I've heard, like read your books and like heard you in so many amazing things, but how did nutrition kind of like become this turning point in your life and career? Just a little oh, synopsis yeah, from the it beginning. Was all my, uh, my grandmother. Okay. Uh, I was just a kid. Uh, when my grandma was sent home in a wheelchair to die, mm. she was diagnosed with end-stage heart disease. Uh, she already had so many bypass surgeries, basically nothing you could do at some point. Confined a wheelchair, crushing chest pain. Her life was over right. at age 65. Mm. I was unsure about this guy, Nathan Pritikin, one of our early lifestyle medicine pioneers. And what happened next is actually detailed in Pritikin's biography. It talks about Francis Greger, my grandmother. Um, they wheeled her in and she walked out, uh, though she was given a medical death sentence at age 65, thanks to a healthy diet, mm. was able to enjoy another 31 years on this planet till age 96 to continue to enjoy her six grandkids, including me. So that's why I went into medicine. That's why wow. I practice lifestyle medicine, why I uh, started nutritionfacts.org, why I wrote How Not to Die, why all the proceeds from all my books are all donated directly to charity. I just want to do for everyone's family what Pritikin did for my family. Oh my gosh, that rings so true to me because my grandmother died of ovarian cancer mm. and her doctor did not believe in nutrition. And I think that you know, everything could have been different for her if she had a different direction from her doctors and she was so trusting in that. So was your, was your grandma a little bit hesitant to kind of change her diet at first or was she all in? Oh, well, I mean, once she found out that she could walk again, she yeah. could, I mean, that she could reverse it. I mean, back then we didn't even know heart disease was reversible. We right. just get worse, 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 and you die. Right. Um, it's similar to the way we used to think, you know, type two diabetes was. You just, mm -hmm. you know, you go blind and you lose your kidney function, you lose your lower limbs. Um, and you know, we can slow down the rate at which you decline with medications or something, but you know, it's pretty much a one-way process. But now we know, thanks to all these interventional trials with plant-based diets, no, we can actually, if you treat the cause. Right. The underlying cause of these lifestyle diseases, change your lifestyle. Oh, well, then your body can come back to health. You know, one of the most amazing things I learned in all my medical training was that within 15 years of stopping smoking, your lung cancer risk approaches that of a lifelong non-smoker. It's amazing. Okay. Your lungs can clear out all that. Oh, no, we lost him. 
uh, with diet. These these you know disease reversal studies typically done in you know people in their fifties, sixties. So God, they could eat you know decades. They could be slathering their insides with cheeseburgers and milkshakes, and still at that late date, all of a sudden you put them on a healthy diet, their body starts to heal. Yeah. So why do you think that there's so much resistance to a plant-based diet, even though there's so much research, so much science, like so many recipes? Why do you think that there's still so much resistance to it? Um, Well, a lot of it has to do with ignorance. I mean, doctors just were never taught about the role nutrition can play Mm -hmm. um, in changing the course of illness. So they graduate without this powerful tool in their medical toolbox. Of course, there's also, you know, uh, financial constraints. I mean, people Doctors typically aren't paid to tell people how to take better care of themselves. A lot right. of medical education um, is funded by, you know, the pharmaceutical industry. Right. Um, and so, you know, you, know, you can ask your doctor the last time they were taken out to dinner by big broccoli. It's probably been a while. <laughs> um, uh, and so it's just the whole system isn't set up. I mean, mm-hmm. I mean, you know, the most profitable foods are pretty much the worst foods. And so... Right. You know, I mean, produce is like the worst thing to sell. It's a loss leader because yeah. it goes bad. What, what, right. kind of, what you want is a, is, a, is a snack cake that sits on the shelf for a few weeks. That's how you make money. Mm-hmm. Dirt cheap ingredients. You sell like, you know, brown sugar water yeah. for a dollar a can. I mean, it's like all profit. Mm-hmm. Um, and so I mean, there's a trillion dollar processed food industry. And so that's, that's the billboards, right? Mm-hmm. We uh, have you ever seen a Super Bowl ad for sweet potatoes? Like, it's just not going to happen. That's not where the money is. Yeah. And so the system is just set up to incentivize kind of the worst food. Mm-hmm. Um, so that's why we have to kind of take, you know, there is this mountain of evidence, but it's about, you know, taking responsibility for our own health, for our family's health, um, uh, you know, and, uh, you know, and make the most important decisions we can make, which is you know, what to feed ourselves and our families. Yeah, exactly. And I mean, I feel like you work so, I mean, not, I feel like I see you work so hard to kind of get this information out there. Do you ever feel super discouraged by this big mountain of all of these hills anyone, that you got to climb? Anyone who's been, in, I, I, I totally understand that. I mean, where you come from, but for someone who's been doing this for 30 years mm-hmm. and, you know, there are people, you know, that have, like Dr. Clapper doing this for 50 years, like, yeah, there has been this uh, amazing sea change. So like, I mean, it used to be just some completely fringe thing you couldn't even talk about. Yeah, I mean, look now the, the the new mayor of New York City is vegan. I mean, come on, this I know is, I mean, that's pretty amazing. That's the pretty world amazing. World is changing. Yes, at this amazing pace. Yes, um, but you really only, but it still seems really slow compared right. to certainly. I mean, the science is on our side, but. Um, so for those who've been involved in this a long time, I mean, this is, things are, things are going amazing, you know, things that I thought would never happen in my lifetime are happening. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I mean, just like, you know, fast food chains doing veggie burgers. I'm like, this is crazy. Right. Yeah. Yeah. Um, uh, but, uh, so yeah, no things, things. So every year the things just get better. So yeah, oh, that's great. Not discouraged. Yeah. I actually just chatted with Dr. Clapper on the podcast and he gave me so much inspiration. I honestly was a little exhausted from the book tour and just like, you know, how it goes. And, uh, yeah. he's just like uh, this wealth of information and knowledge oh, and we really got great. into it. And yeah, he just yeah, yeah. like re enlivened my own passion about everything. Oh yeah. No, that it's wonderful. And, you know, he goes around and talks to medical students. So he really kind mm-hmm. of reignites that idealistic spark that drove him to medicine in the first place. But exactly. Yeah. You got to take care of yourself. Being on the road is tough. Yeah. Right. It's hard to sleep. Well, it's hard to eat. Well, it's hard to everything. So oh, yeah, my God, the eating, sure take care of yourself. Yeah, I come to the Midwest. I live in San Diego. So I live in the bubble of there's like a law that there has to be a farmer's market every day in every zip code. But like oh, I come to go. the Midwest and I look around and I'm like, oh my God, no wonder why everyone's so unhealthy. Like yeah. there's no options for anything. So yeah. I totally get that. And my father is actually a New Yorker and he's mm. like been pushing hard with me on the veganism, but seeing, you know, that New York mayor is a vegan is just like, I'm just like, yeah. see, look, <laughs> it's yeah. a thing. Yeah are doing yeah. it yeah. and active not just kind of in his own life for his own reason yes yes but exactly he is out there saying look we need to change the mm-hmm. schools we need to change yes. the hospital they're feeding the hospitals with the feeding the jails with the mm-hmm. family you know 
like he really wants to make a healthier city and, and take people's lives into account. It's really a, a beautiful thing, their whole campaign. I love that. So I kind of asked on my social media what people wanted to ask you. And one of the main questions was like, if the holidays are like here. So what do you do when you have had the awakening, the, the veil has lifted, you, you're plant-based, you're all into it, but then you have like a, a parent or a spouse or an uncle who has these lifestyle conditions or who eats terribly and they're super stubborn, but you just really want to be able to like rub off on them or you get into a, a wine fueled argument about veganism. Like what would be like your, you know, sort of advice to somebody going into the holidays this year and just like family functions in general yeah, and kind right, of like right. speaking you to need them. A, you need a good vegan chef on your side. That's yeah. The secret. Um, <laughs> uh, well, no, you, you got to seduce them with food. Yeah. You bring a dish. That's awesome. That's just mm-hmm. like undeniably amazing. Yes. And then people are like, whoa, I didn't know I could. I thought you were eating, you know, bark and, and you know, whatever people think we're eating. Right. I mean, it's like, wow, we food. make absolutely amazing food. Yeah. Um, and so then it just kind of, oh, well, okay. I can see how, you know, mm-hmm. uh, you know, this is not just some crazy thing. You can eat delicious food. You don't have to kind of choose between your health right. and uh, your taste buds. And so, yeah, that would be, and who doesn't want to like show up with a pie or something like who, who would turn away anybody showing up with a pie? Like, oh my God, that's great. Yes. Um, I mean, that's literally what my whole yeah. book is about, like pleasure and healing. You can have them both. Like, love it. You don't have love to it. give it up. Yeah, it's I love pumpkin that. season. Let's do it. So wait, what's your favorite holiday? What's your favorite holiday side dish? I gotta know. Oh uh, well, I'm a yeah, I'm a big pumpkin pie. Okay, your pumpkin, pumpkin pie, can everything. Really, and sweet potatoes. I just love those, like just uh-huh. bright, glorious, you know. Yeah. Oh my god. Yeah. So that's I mean, not that I don't eat them all all year round. All but, the time. Uh, now they yeah, just that's, like that's shine. Big, yeah, they're like know, the front runner. This is, yeah, this is good. Oh, and then I'm a big uh, you know, fresh cranberry sauce kind of guy. Okay. Okay, yeah, I'll have um, to send you. I just posted a cranberry salsa instead of a cranberry ooh, sauce. It's we're super talking. good. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Love I think it. you'll love it. Love mm-hmm. it. Yeah, it's so funny. I actually hated sweet potatoes growing up because they were covered <laughs> in marshmallows over the holidays. Oh. And I was like, this is disgusting. How do people eat this? And then as you know, I became a professional chef. I was like, wait, sweet potatoes are incredible. Like, what are people doing to them? Like, this is a yeah. disgrace. So <laughs> <laughs> I totally get that. So, okay. On my TikTok, I actually have a viral series called breaking Ooh. up with dairy uh-huh. and people are either super desperate to break up with their very addictive relationship to dairy, or they're very, very against it. So I would love to kind of hear your take on the importance of breaking up with dairy. They're against breaking up with dairy. Is that the, is oh that yeah, there's the like thing? hardcore. Oh my God. Yeah. The cheese, yeah, yeah. No, the cheese yeah, squad well, is I mean, there. Okay. I mean, okay. 20 years ago, I can imagine having this already, but now it's a thing still. You like, should see yeah. <laughs> there's, there's like a constellation of new choices. You open up the dairy mm-hmm. case. Can you even find the, like the animal milk in it? I mean, it's like you have to dig around. Raw. It's really the cheese. It's really the cheese. cheese. Okay. Mm-hmm. Well, look, you know, plant-based cheese are getting better and better all the time. Mm-hmm. Um, and, you know, there's all sorts of wonderful options now. They're not necessarily the healthiest, but certainly if it gets you anything that gets you away from the... Uh, you know, the, the milk protein, the cholesterol, all that stuff. Well then great. Go for it. Do it. Yeah. So like, what are like your, like, what's your biggest argument event against dairy? Cause I know I have some skeptical listeners still who oh, are still well, like uh, just yeah, in. The two, yeah. The two big things, uh, the strongest uh, connections are uh, with Parkinson prostate cancer. Parkinson's so Parkinson's and prostate is, cancer. A leading, okay. uh, is, is a leading killer. Um, and prostate cancer is leading uh, cancer killer men. Um, and yeah, both very tightly uh, um, uh, correlated to a dairy consumption. Um, Interesting. So yeah, so the, the, I mean that's the kind of the primary reason. Um, and uh, yeah, and then one can talk about other stuff like allergies and infantile colic and all sorts of other things. But I mean that's that's yeah, those are the biggies. Well, I mean, and I know for me and Dr. Clapper and I had a huge discussion about this, but like as a woman, I have endometriosis and, you know, Mm. so many women have period problems and, you know, like 
just, just overall health for women. And like people that come to me, like this first thing I always say is like, you've got to give up dairy, like before mm. anything, like dairy has got to go. And usually they'll like within a week, people notice like such a big difference oh, by just giving up dairy. Yeah. 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 That's awesome. So, okay. So your books are all about like breaking down the myths and like misinformation about nutrition and fat diets. And so like, what's the most baffling myth that you hear about nutrition today that still just makes you scratch your head in frustration? Oh, there's all crazy. I mean, there's <laughs> just no end to the craziness, right? Yeah. I mean, only in nutrition could people get away with this kind of stuff. Although now in politics, it's like people that are now like just like looking around confused at our political scene yeah. and like alternative facts and just people making up like the absolute craziest possible thing. I'm like, that's the life any person in nutrition has lived for the last 40 years. Like, what are yeah. you talking about? Mm -hmm. Like, yeah, just making up absolute batshit crazy stuff. <laughs> like, that's just like, it's like flat earth theory all the way back. Um, you're like oh you gosh. need no data to support, you know, what, whatever crazy stuff you can get, you know, you can get best-selling books telling people to eat, you know, bacon and butter for their health. I mean, mm -hmm. you know, it's like, well, once you have that, it's just like, there's just no limit. Yeah. I mean, yeah. There, yeah. So, I mean, it's, but, and it would be kind of like funny if people weren't dying. Right. Right. I mean, as if these books didn't have actual real consequences in real life, like real strokes, real heart attacks, real horrible. I mean, you know, orphan children, right? Mm -hmm. Widowed spouses. This is what this kind of, you know, uh, it's amazing that people, you know, just don't have a little more critical thinking, uh, you know, when it comes yeah. to this. I remember when I was in clinical practice and I'd ask people, you know, why they ate the way they ate. And they'd be give me answers like, oh, well, you know, some dude at the gym told me about this. I'm like, really? Right. The most important decision you make about your health. I mean, what you put in your body, mm -hmm. you're, you're basing it on some like checkout aisle magazine. Like, right. If there was ever a decision in life to be made based on the best available balance of evidence. Right. Mm -hmm. I mean, people probably put more thought into like buying a toaster online. It's like, Oh, got to check the reviews. Got to like, I mean, then they actually uh -huh. do on like the most important critical decisions of their lives, the, the you know, safety to their family. Right. Well, I think a lot of times people are sleep eating called sleepwalking or sleep eating. So we're just kind of like going through the motions of what other people are eating or what we're told to eat instead of actually like critically thinking about like, well, why am I doing this? And what's mm -hmm. the point of it? And how, how do the steps get me here? And yeah, it's pretty frustrating. Like I've, you know, I've seen doctors that I've respected who have been about the plant-based scene now suddenly going towards a carnivore, like full carnivore diet saying plant-based you know, molecules are bad for you. And I just am like, I don't understand where this information is coming from in the universe where like yeah. this is suddenly becoming so trending, you know? And so it's, it's really interesting. Well, I mean, your perspective yeah, that's on it. why it's important that you don't take anybody's word for anything. That's why right. I was kind of guru worship. And I keep telling people, you don't listen to me. Look mm -hmm. at it, listen to the science. The science is on our side, right? right. So you just listen to the science. Mm -hmm. Then there's never a problem with trends or with crazy, you know, someone bonks their head and all of a sudden wakes up and says, we should all eat, you know, marshmallows or something. <laughs> I mean, it, yeah. it's, it's, oh, we'll just stick to the science. And the science, I mean, we have, you know, consensus in the scientific nutrition literature going back decades as to the mm -hmm. core elements of healthy eating, healthy living. Um, in fact, uh, you know, the Dr. David Katz at, um, at Yale started this organization called the True Health Initiative, which is at truehealthinitiative.org, mm -hmm. and just got hundreds of the top nutritional professionals in the world together to agree on a consensus statement as to what is the healthiest human diet, period. Oh, wow. Spoiler alert, it's a diet centered around whole plants. But I mean, uh, but the, the reason I had to do that is because there's just so much craziness out there. Mm -hmm. But the science is, I mean, they make it sound like every headline is like, oh, coffee's good, coffee's bad. No, there's a body of science that really hasn't changed um, fundamentally mm -hmm. in decades. Like fruits and vegetables were good for you. They're <laughs> still, they will always, I mean, you know, I mean, it's just a mountain of evidence is just overwhelming. Yeah, definitely. I know. I feel that too. So we're approaching the new year and I had to have your book, how not to diet on my mind. And, you know, diet culture is 
massive. And I think diet culture also fuels a lot of this chaos and confusion and misinformation around what we should be eating, how we're going to lose weight, how we're going to look skinnier, how we're going to, you know, all these kind of superficial reasons for why we're eating what we're eating. So if someone listening to this is thinking about their new year's goals and their new year's resolutions, like what best advice can you give to someone for rethinking those resolutions and kind of like that diet mentality? Yeah. I mean, the, uh, I mean, diets don't work by definition mm-hmm. because going on a diet implies at some point you're going to be going off of it, right? Permanent right. weight loss requires permanent dietary change. Healthier habits just have to become a way of life, right? Mm-hmm. And if it's going to be lifelong, well, then you want it to lead to a long life. But thankfully the single diet best proven for weight loss just so happens to be the safest, cheapest way to eat for the longest, healthiest life. A diet center around whole plant food. So you don't have to choose. Um, science is clear, but it really has to go in as a, not just like, what am I going to do for bikini season? But it's like, mm-hmm. what am I going to do for the rest of my life? Right. So you can feel good forever. And I think that's super important too. And really thinking about instead of how do I look, how do I feel? Cause I think a lot of times if we're trying to look and feel, look a certain way, we feel awful doing that. Right. And I, in my early twenties was also in that cycle. Mm. So starting off with how we feel and like exactly the longevity will equal like overall the results that you want. I love that. So like, what's next for you? What projects do you have going on? I just saw you in a clip. I just saw the trailer literally as I was waiting for you to get on and I'm going to watch this because I don't even remember the name of this new documentary, but I think it's called, Oh yeah. They're trying to kill us. They're trying to kill us. So I would love for you to to kill us. I'd love for you to talk about this. Yeah. 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 I'm super excited about the documentary. Um, uh, yeah. Uh, uh, the, uh, um, it's, it's, uh, you know, talking about the, um, uh, the targeting of, uh, poor communities, particularly Mm -hmm. of color for, you know, the worst of the worst, alcohol, tobacco, fast food, right. Um, and just kind of some of the kind of institutional, um, uh, uh, you know, uh, ways in which our, our health is being undermined. Right. Um, yeah. So yeah. Fascinating. Um, what I'm working on that it's, it's ironic though. I don't even remember being interviewed. It was so many years ago that I oh, really? <laughs> Um, but, uh, yeah, I think I think I mean I think they actually well I, don't quote me, but I think they had it ready, but then uh, George Floyd hit, and I think they were like, whoa. They, I mean, you know, we don't want to be seen as kind of taking advantage of the moment. I don't know what their actual thinking was, but I can imagine I them thinking like we don't want to be like look like we're exploiting this. I still yeah, they just wanted between, to give it you know yeah. it, it is its own kind of thing. I mm-hmm. I don't know exactly, but it has been in the can for a while. I'm so glad it's out. Oh um, yeah, finally. it looks incredible. Super finally, exciting. massive and, change needs uh, to happen. Eric yeah. Adams is in it too, the new mayor. Yeah, and back then, I think his little byline says he's like you know Brooklyn Borough President. They got to change his byline. The mayor, now. yeah, very exciting. <laughs> um, yeah, so uh, but what I'm working on now is my next book, How Not to Age, on all the Ooh. longevity research. It'll be out hopefully December of next year, 2022. Okay. Wow, that Although, sounds amazing. Uh, it's uh, going to be tough to hit the deadline. And there's all sorts of supply chain issues. So it might yes. get pushed back, but we I've will see. I've experienced that. <laughs> I have experienced that supply oh, chain. Oh, I issue. bet. Right. Was the cookbook come out okay? Um, It got lost on a shipping container for a while in the middle no! of the ocean. <laughs> Oh my so, God, that's crazy. Yeah. So I had like this huge launch set up and they were like, oh. sorry, your books are in the middle of the ocean. We don't know where they are. Oh my God, um, that's horrible. But they showed up, They it, the day got pushed back a month, but then somehow I got a hundred, however many people, like 175, however many people came to my book launch party in San Diego, I got exactly that many books wow. expedited or something like nice. morning of. So it was like, yeah, that it was that's stressful. <laughs> it was yeah, like, I bet. Whoa. I bet. Yeah. My book is not happy. Yeah. Yeah. Right. No, nobody is. It's okay. So, um, I was just going to do a quick speed round. I do this with all my guests now. It's quite fun to see. Okay. So if you were to be a flavor of vegan ice cream, what would you be? Ooh, strawberry. Strawberry. Okay. I was very, come on. I love love strawberry ice cream. Okay. Coffee or tea. Uh, Oh, uh, tea. Definitely. Tea. Awesome. Uh, beans or lentils. Lentils. Oh, lentils. lentils. Oh, yeah. Okay, okay, okay. I like that. Um, books or podcasts? 
Oh, books. Of course, you're the well, master of although, writing. But now, but now I'm actually reading books on, you know, on my computer. Yeah, yeah, There's yeah. still books, God damn it. Just but, but, but they're just, yeah, it's, it's, there's so much, you know, I, I don't have to carry them around my backpack. You're the king of writing books. I mean, I don't know. I wrote, I wrote a cookbook and I was exhausted after that. I don't know how they you They are, it, people have no idea. What oh, it's say. a, it's a they thing. Have no so. idea. You do, you do the damn thing. Um, okay. So are you a sweet or savory guy? Oh, both. <laughs> I don't know. I love, I love both. I love them both. All right. You're like a sweet and Mr. Sweet Potato, the, the, the vegetable of sweet and savory. Um, are, you, perfect. are you a night owl or an early riser? Early riser. Okay. Fruits or veggies? Vegetables. Obviously. Dark and um, leafy. <laughs> All right. What has been your favorite project that you've ever worked on? Wow. Um, oh, I, I, a paper I wrote in a journal called Critical Reviews of Microbiology. Duh. Okay. <laughs> yeah, I'm really, I'm really proud of that piece. Uh, one of my, uh, I, you know, what's it called? In one case of my contributions to, to the uh, to the scientific literature. I mean, most of what I do is I just review other people's work, right? Yeah. It's like this study, this, this study, this, and so that's one of my uh, few like unique contributions. Like it wasn't in the literature, but I put stuff together and came up with uh, kind of new theories. Mm -hmm. um, yeah, and uh, just talking about pandemic risk. Okay, awesome. Um, are you a staycation or a vacation kind of guy? Well, pff, everybody's staycation these days. Everyone's but, staycationed uh, out. I know that. Yeah, yeah. Whether we like it or not. <laughs> it's true. Okay. And then what about, I guess the final one I'll go for, just because you're walking this entire time that we're on this, which I give you mad credit for. Um, are you a, like a walker or a yogi? Which do you prefer? A walk. I love walking. walking. Yeah, you love yeah, it? Yeah. Just all yeah, day yeah. long. I love that. All day long. So I, I always ask, I know we're tight on time. So um, do you have any final words of wisdom for our audience? Like anything on your heart that you want to share tonight? Just the good news that we have tremendous power mm. over our health, destiny, and longevity. The vast majority of premature death and disability is preventable with a plant-based diet and other healthy lifestyle behaviors. So just do it and happy holidays, everybody. <laughs> Love it. Thank you so much. <laughs>